anytime I get Chip involved with the microphone, it literally goes to peace. Hey folks, this is Ray from DCRainmaker.com. Today I've got Chip from Wahoo Fitness here, and we're here to talk about the Wahoo Kicker Trainer, in particular the strain gauge aspect of it and some of the accuracy pieces. Um, so this is something we tried to film at Eurobike, uh, but it seems like anytime I get Chip involved with the microphone, it literally goes to crap. Even right here, we have two microphones, and now the other one's dead and not working. So this is, we've got the improvised uh, handoff mic here with a pen and a lab. So hopefully this works. If not, I'm just giving up. Um, so take, take three, right? This take is, three and a half <laughs> or something. In two different continents. Yes. Um, so what we kind of want to talk about is some of the changes with the Wahoo Kicker when it comes to accuracy. There's a lot of questions on that. You know, obviously you took away the strain gauge and maybe you can kind of explain what was there before, what's there now, and kind of why you did that. Sure, sure. So, um, and we went through uh, the, you know, all the other features, and um, the thing that everybody keeps coming to, and it was even internally as I as I made the decision that we had to do it, was you took out the strain gauge. You know, it doesn't have a real power meter. So, you know, I, without going into too much detail, really in the kicker, there's two things that create power. There's resistance, and then there's the brake, and and. I, like everyone else, or like most of our sales guys, was, um, you know, when we first, we built the first kicker, thought, well, a strain gauge is how you measure power. And, and what, I, what I've come to realize is it, when you're outdoors and you have power that comes from, you know, rolling resistance, wind resistance, hills, that you need to be able to characterize that and measure it with something that's, you know, a strain gauge is the only way to do it. You can't measure all those other things. So I thought, you know, I'm going to do an indoor trainer, I have to use a strain gauge. And, and what we did is we put the strain gauge on the brake. And that presented lots of challenges. Um, and, and when we did it, and we made it work, and it's worked great. But the challenges, were, you know, one is we've got basically a 40 to 1 gear ratio from the crank to the, to the, to the flywheel. So we're running the flywheel at four or 5,000 RPMs, and we end up having ounces of load on there versus, you know, up to hundreds of pounds at a crank or a rear wheel. So, so in order to make that sensitive enough to get ounces, we have to have a very delicate strain gauge in there. And things like picking it up by the wrong place can bend that strain gauge. Um, the other thing is that strain gauge has to be on a brake, and we have to measure that small amount of torque with a bearing so that the brake could otherwise spin freely, and then we pin it, and the strain gauge just measures that rotation. So any Inconsistencies, inconsistencies in that bearing caused trouble. So anyway, the long story, it was very difficult to make the first kicker. It was hard, um, and it's it's been a great product. It still is a great product, but as we looked at the challenges over the years around around reliability, reliability, warranty issues, accuracy, everything pointed to that strain gauge design. And ironically, as you look at what the kicker is, it is a brake and, a, and, a, and it has some friction. And so we've gotten really good at characterizing that friction and that's what the spin down does. And then the other piece is how do you know how much power is coming out of the brake? Well, it turns out we're using an electromagnet. We're really good at measuring all the things that need to be known. And the, the power in is basically directly proportional and almost perfectly correlates to the power coming out. So unlike outdoors where the power going in is from things like road resistance and wind, here the power going into that brake is all controlled by us. It's our algorithm. It's what we're setting it to. And so we don't need a strain gauge. The strain gauge just adds a tremendous amount of complexity. It's not an easy problem to solve, but we're able to solve it really, really accurately. So this kicker is way more accurate than you know than than the old kicker and and is as accurate as any trainer if not more accurate you know we our our, our claim now is plus or minus two percent um we've got lots and lots of data behind that the two plus or minus two percent really falls on the outskirts uh, or on the outliers it's the 100 watts is plus or minus two percent well that's plus or minus two watts and then at the 800 watts it starts to get where you know it's hard to have a an uh sorry a dynamometer that can run that high without overheating so you know in, in the in the sweet spot we're we're actually quite quite a lot better than that and we see it 
it's it's extremely consistent. There's no calibration issues anymore. Um, so anyway, it's it was a long, it was a lo it's it, the the biggest pain point has been this idea that we remove the strain gauge to you know make it cheaper or whatever. You know, we remove the strain gauge to make it a better product, um, and it is a it's it's a lot better now than it was. It's 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 one of the things I'm most proud of. You know, we're launching Kicker Studio here at Interbike, and one of the challenges there is you know you've got 20 kickers in a room, they need to be consistent in their power measurement because people are looking at each other and they're comparing to each other. So that's that's what we've done. For those that have the existing kicker today, is there anything that you're doing to make that increase accuracy available to them or are they? There is. We have been working on the same algorithms and the same uh, the same models and, and we actually have it ready. I think it's actually in beta with, some, with a lot of folks now and we've been using it in our own in the studios and basically we've we've put the new technology and the new modeling into the old kicker. Uh, all it really requires is that you do the advanced spin down. So what we do is a spin down normally in the kicker world is to, to characterize the friction. So the brake is off and we see how much energy is absorbed in a certain amount of time and that tells us what the power from friction is. What we do is a second one where we turn the brake on at a known position and that characterizes the brake. And once we have that, then we can utilize that. So you, you would have to do one advanced spin down and if you, you know, if you suspect your kicker's a little high or a little low, the older kicker, this is a method that we're not going to force it on people, but if they want to try it, they can, uh, they can turn on this, um, this new, new accuracy. There, the, the other thing it buys you that I, that I, that I left out is we have, um, in, the, in the old model where you have a strain gauge, we would set a power level, then we would read it through a feedback loop, and we use a PID controller to, to lock in on the setting. So we would set a power, read a power, and then if there's an error, we would set the power a little higher, read it again, set it a little higher, and what that led to is, is lag. Or, you know, if you went from 100 watts to 500 watts in an ergometer workout, it might take five seconds to make that transition. Well, by doing direct control, which we have in the new kicker and we'll have in this new firmware, you can basically make that brake change immediately. You know, we could always make the brake change immediately. What we couldn't do is hone in on that accurate spot, that accurate setting. So now we have no, it's much more responsive, which is, which is really great. There, the, the downside for the older kickers is we've added more sensing in the new one. So we have temperature sensing in multiple places and we have current sensing. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be better than than a kicker that's giving you trouble that's a few years old, but it's not gonna be as good as the new one because we don't have all the extra sensing. What are so you know there's been certainly some discussion on the old kicker in terms of accuracy issues that some people have had. What are the things that lead or have led to those accuracy issues on the older kicker? Well, there's a couple of things that can happen. You can actually have it fail. And, and that's usually pretty easy to tell because it quits working. But um, what that manifests itself in is, a, is the, the spin down result gives you an offset. And that's kind of the output from the strain gauge. And it's really reading a voltage. And if it fails, it either reads zero or generally 4096. And that means it's either failed to an open circuit or a short circuit, and it's broke. Um, and that's where now this, this new firmware could take over. But in the past, that means it's either the strain gauge has failed or the op amp in our micro in our board has failed. And that, that, that leads to us having to send you parts or perhaps swap the kicker out or do a refurbish, refurbish it for you. Um, but in general, if it's if it, it they, they work just like all strain gauges. If it's good and you don't lift, if you don't, if it's not bent or anything, you're. Um, if it's good when you get it, it'll generally be good forever. There is um, strain gauges have to be calibrated, and so um, you know if if by some chance it wasn't calibrated properly at the factory, that could that could lead to a little high reading or a little low reading. Um, but generally, they, we haven't seen a drift issue. So if it's right, it's not like it's going to get worse over time. Okay. It's just those, you know, those those frailties of the train of the of the strain gauge and and tendency for the op amps to burn out um, or the strain gauge itself to just to just short circuit. But, and and I'm, I mean, it's not a it's not a catastrophic problem. I mean, we have we have they do fail, and and they won't fail in the new one. But um, but it hasn't been something that we've had a ton of trouble with.
with the new kick, are you still recommending folks do a spin down in, in general, every ride, every how often? You know, kind of like, I've always said every few every few weeks probably. Um, as long as you're staying in the same environment, same temperature, oh, yeah. there's no need to do a spin down regularly. Um, it doesn't hurt to do it, but it's really not necessary. Okay. You know, if you, if you move it from one place to another, or if you change the bikes on and off of it, um, it's probably a good idea to do it. The advanced spin down, we're doing it at the factory, so you never really need to do it. It's it, again, it's 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 set it and forget it. The regular spin down, kind of like always, every few weeks is a good idea. Okay, um, is the spin down? You mentioned temperature. Is that temperature of the environment that you're in, or is the temperature like warming up after 10 minutes, or what? What has a bigger impact there? So if it's um, it's it's temperature of the environment. Okay. Yeah. So if you're in an, if you're if you're moving it from cold to hot or indoors to outdoors, that'd be a good idea to do a spin down before you use it. It's, it's really the, the characterization of the friction in the system. So if it's really cold, the bearings are gonna be a little stiffer. The belt is gonna be a little smaller because it, it contracts with temperature. Okay, um, and so folks, I, it's, it's probably, sorry for all the, the random people <laughs> that walk in front of the camera. We literally have like 50 yards, even 100 yards in every direction. There's nobody here. Like it's the end of the show and somehow <laughs> people have selected the one and a half meters between us and the camera to walk through every time. Um, sorry. Uh, so, talk a little bit about, in my review, I mentioned kind of an issue I saw with train road and erg mode, and it's not really train road's fault, it's more just erg mode in general, where it was basically making this perfect, like, it, it reported the power that I set it at, but not necessarily the power I was actually putting out. So, it missed some of the, the random kind of variations in my power level. Um, talk a little about why that is and kind of what you're doing. Yeah, that. sure. So. Um, I mentioned the two sources of power in a kicker. I actually forgot one, and that's acceleration. So the flywheel is, a, is an energy sink. As it speeds up, it absorbs energy, and as it slows down, it gives off energy. And so what, we've, what, what you're seeing there is us reporting the brake power and the friction power and neglecting to report acceleration power. And that's as you're speeding up, you're putting it, you're actually putting in a lot more power, but the, the kicker doesn't see it. The flywheel is, is absorbing that energy, but it's a it's math. Like we know, we can know how much it's accelerating, we know what the inertia is, so we can add that power into the calculation. What 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 we did is is when you add that into an erg workout, it tends to lead to unstable. You know, erg workouts are generally at a pretty constant speed, so it's much it's much smoother operating if we leave it out. Where what so so what we're going to do is leave it out of the control loop and then put it back into the reported power. So when you're making a transition from one to another, if you kept the same cadence, it would be exact. But what happens is you say, oh, oh here's a you know there's a there's a hard interval coming. I better speed up, and that's right. and so we'll um, and I think that's ready. We just haven't we haven't released yet. Okay. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the time just chatting about this. Uh, I know there's been a lot of questions, so it's kind of like the <laughs> strain, consolidate strain them all. gate is my uh, yeah. is what I call it. <laughs> exactly. So again, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button down below, as well as the subscribe button, uh, so that we get all the latest sports technology goodness. Uh, there's certainly plenty more coming this fall as we go into the holiday season, uh, both from the cycling world, but of course also things from running and action cameras and lots of goodness. With that, have a good one.